Welcome to Kermit Uncut. I did a blog last week about the fact that the piano, the Jane Campion movie, is 25 years old and it's back in cinemas. And I really admire it. I think it's a brilliant film, but I don't actually like it. And I said, what's the film that has that effect for you? What's the film that you really admire, that you know is great, but you kind of don't really get on with? There have been loads of responses from you. Here are just some of them. Unsurprisingly, the subject of Citizen Kane has been touched upon a number of times. Here are two replies about Citizen Kane, one from Nick. I could never understand why Citizen Kane was often voted best ever film by critics and was relieved when it was knocked off its top spot by Vertigo, that was a few years ago, though that wouldn't be my choice either, though I suppose they're both great films. There was a really big stink when Vertigo took over from Citizen Kane as best film of all time in those BFI polls that happened a few years back. This from Jake Leonard, 1992. I expect flack for this, perhaps justifiably, but I'm sad to say Citizen Kane. I saw it, I admired it, I could tell how influential and pioneering it had been. I know it was considered the greatest film ever made for a long time. I can tell how good a film it is, but it just left me cold. And get this, feeling as though I'd watched a really well-made two-hour vanity project for Orson Welles. Don't say that to Mark Cousins. Now, from Citizen Kane, widely hailed as the greatest film ever made, to the greatest film ever made, The Exorcist. And this from Daryl Revok. Brace yourself, the masterpiece that doesn't do it for me is The Exorcist. I know it's a classic and everything, but it doesn't have the profound impact on me that it seems to have on everyone else. I like Lee J. Cobb, I like the 70s weirdness, but the prosthetic effects are so over the top that they completely undermine the straight-faced actor's ruminations on whether the devil really is involved in Reagan's behavior. He clearly is. Now, the issue about The Exorcist is this. Firstly, the idea that The Exorcist is one of the greatest films ever made is still a fairly recent one. I mean, I remember when we were making The Fear of God, the documentary back in 1998, having to argue the case for that film. The other thing is that in terms of the makeup and everything, I do understand that, but I have to say the film looked different when it first came out. No one saw the makeup. People just saw sheer terror. Now this is from Ben Woodard, and this is interesting. I always get bizarre looks when I tell people this, but I've never been a massive fan of the Shawshank Redemption. I truly admire its scope and its masterful storytelling, and Freeman and Robbins are fantastic in it, but for me, I prefer Darabont's The Green Mile. It's much more of an emotional film, which will always hold a place in my heart. Now, Shawshank is an interesting case because when it first came out, it flopped. It wasn't a hit in cinemas. It actually lost money in cinemas. It found its audience on video and through word of mouth. Shawshank is one of those films that's regularly at the top three best movies of all time on the IMDb. And it tends to do a little dance with another film, The Godfather, which many of you wrote in to say that you didn't actually like, that you preferred Goodfellas, that you thought The Godfather was, whisper it, boring. Now, I completely disagree. I think The Godfather is brilliant, but it's amazing how many of you wrote in to say that you thought it was a bit meh. A few more recent titles. This from Federico Latalia. Mad Max Fury Road for me. I respect the incredible hardship George Miller went through to get the film made, the artistry and craft behind every frame, but the Cesar score was mind-numbing, a la Dunkirk, and the characters are incredibly shallow. Now, I must confess that when Mad Max Fury Road first came out, I was kind of iffy about it, and I reviewed it in a paper, and I said one of the things about it is you get exhausted. It, you kind of get battle fatigue from it because it seems to be at one level. I have subsequently re-watched it, and specifically I re-watched it in the black and white version, and I think I misjudged it. So I think now it's a better film than I thought when it first came out. I think I got that slightly wrong, but interesting to hear that it doesn't work for you. This from Tom Lincoln. Incredibly well acted, thorough, worthy, but also long and ultimately pretty dull. Glad to say I saw it, but never again. And you're not alone in that. Even the people that sort of stood up and championed Lincoln in their quieter moments would go, yeah, was a bit long. A couple of last ones. This from 10,000 Maniacs. Brazil. It's very intelligent, very clever, but it leaves me cold. It's a film that has just never engaged me emotionally. It looks great and has great visuals, but I think its genius is also its downfall. It trades characters for mind-blowing ideas. I have to say, I disagree. When I first saw Brazil, I, was, I felt like I'd been run over by an emotional train. But I went to see that film with a very good friend of mine called Duncan Cooper, and we didn't speak to each other during the film. And I watched it, and I was overwhelmed by it. And he watched it and was underwhelmed by it. And we came out of the film, and I went, wow. And he went, really? It was terrible. 
Final couple of points on the subject of Jean-Luc Godard, who came up several times in your responses. This from Jack Ra. On Breathless, I know the movie was a major one for the young baby boomer generation. It was like the invention of electricity. It was radical, fresh, and had a whole new way of observing movies. But I find it a total bore. Now, a few of you wrote in about Jean-Luc Godard, and as you know, I've always been a great fan of the Jim McBride remake of Breathless. I, I actually prefer it to the Jean-Luc Godard. On the subject of which, this from Harry Lime Shadow, anything by Andre Tarkovsky, whom I find to be an interminable bore. Solaris, Ivan's Childhood and the Sacrifice, I can watch even if I don't have an emotional reaction, but the rest just test my patience beyond breaking point. Once again, the Steven Soderbergh remake of Solaris is actually really good fun. I know, Solaris is great, okay? The original Solaris is great. Steven Soderbergh's version is pretty good as well. And if anyone's ever feeling any sort of concern about Jean-Luc Godard and how he may not actually be, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, watch Redoubtable, the Michel has an vicious comedy about Jean-Luc Godard and everything that happened after 1968. I laughed all the way through. <laughs> Because it's better, Monsieur Godard.